I'm going to talk about um, collaborative georeferencing um, uh, with some references to geolocate. Um, this talk is going to be primarily focused on some of the collaborative georeferencing architecture and less about geolocate, as I figure most of the audience here is probably familiar with, with geolocate in some form or fashion. So, oops, not advancing. Okay, so um, so I'm going to talk, like I said, about the collaborative georeferencing uh, system that we've developed that we affectionately call Koji for short. And so this was developed as part of the geolocate project going back, um, you know, geolocate originally started in 2003, but then somewhere, you know, around 2008, we, we expanded and decided to build a data management platform so that coordinated georeferencing projects could work together and take advantages of, um, you know, the, of commonalities amongst data, shared uh, georeferencing practices, and things like that. And so that's that's what um, led to the to the initial creation of this this product. Now, back in two thousand eight, it was a very you know, preliminary project with a lot of rough edges, and over the years, it has evolved um, through a number of different projects that have. Um, led to the development, you know, needs specific to those projects. You know, in, in 2012, there was a large scale georeferencing project of over 70 fish collections. And that led to a lot of development of the, the Koji infrastructure. And then over time, we, we integrated with, with Symbiota through a project um, georeferencing uh, herbarium data from the CERNIC. Uh, network. And then most recently, we're working with a number of marine uh, digitization networks to really focus on how we do some uh, georeferencing in the marine environment. And I'll, I'll, what I will do is I'll mainly focus on, I'll, I'll introduce the Koji system and kind of how it works. And then I'll talk about some of the most recent developments um, in, in the project since we're short on time. All right. So the way it works is there's two main components. One is there is this geolocate derived workbench. And so that is where you do all the editing. And much like GeoPic, it's, it's an environment where you see a bunch of maps and you have tools for creating points and polygons and lines and however you want to describe your locality. And then you can save that data back. Um, it, um, the, and then the other component is the data portal. And so this is a system where you can upload your data and all of the data get managed in the portal. Um, since we know what are the various locality fields, we can process that data in, in big bulk and you don't have to do a one by one record process. And then we use APIs to communicate to the, to the workbench and the data portal and push data back and forth. And so the way it's kind of the organizational units of, of Koji is that we kind of design everything around this concept of a community. And so what a community is, it's a package of data sources that are all shared together. And that represents kind of like a project, a georeferencing project. So uh, an entire TCN will oftentimes be a community or like that fishnet project, that was a community. And so data within that community is all shared within that community, but it's private to that community. And so you don't have to worry about people outside your community georeferencing your data or having access to your data unless you make your community public. And then within the entire Koji system, there, you know, there are just user accounts and users can join communities or they can be invited to join communities and participate in various different projects. Um, and so here's an example of, of uh, the Fishnet community that I had mentioned earlier. It was one of the largest georeferencing projects in the system. Um, I think it was 1.3 million specimens were georeferenced in this project. Um, you know, one thing I should point out is that you know, the, the Koji system, even though it has been used for domains outside of natural history, it's really focused on natural history collections. And so we really are focused on specimens and specimen data, even though georeferencing is happening at the locality level. So we take imports of specimen records, but then we normalize them out and separate out all the locality information and do, you know, the, the, the necessary data manipulations so that the georeferencing can happen at the locality or collecting event level. And then we can do a number of similarity matchings amongst localities as shown in this example right here that will allow us to say, hey, are there, there's a whole bunch of records here. They all sound like they're the same place. They kind of georeference to the same location. Do you want to group them all together? And when you, you're doing your review of these results, why not just include them all and georeference them all as one group? And that does help in, improve a lot of the efficiency of, of georeferencing. 
And so the other the other aspect that helps improve the efficiency of georeferencing is this ability to to manage a large scale georeferencing project, and that has a lot to do with managing users and being able to assign different regions for, for georeferencing. So in this example on on the left here, you see a map of Arkansas that was georeferenced, and you know a number of different users shown in the different colors, and we can say, oh, we're going to assign the, the countries in the north west corner to one particular user and everything in the northeast corner to another user and so on and so on. And so you can go through and, and have ways for, for uh, assigning different areas or regions or even date, entire data sets to users. And so on, on the right, you can see a, a screenshot of the actual interface for doing that where you can select um, and, and the, where you can select the, the query that you want to assign to a given user and the, wor and the work that they'll be working on. So in this particular example, you can see um, user Isaiah 25 is currently assigned all data from the AMNH version three data set where, where records are from the United States and in Florida. So that person is currently georeferencing all the data from Florida within the AMNH data set. But because it's collaborative, even if records will, if, if other records are found to be similar to an assigned record, even though that record isn't assigned to you, it will still pop up in your queue for georeferencing. Um, and that's because of the shared nature of all the data sets. And so we don't want to eliminate the fact and say, oh, you can only georeference stuff within this data set. You still have the ability to bring in records if the system identifies records that say, hey, this is similar to a record you're working on. So we try to link them together and make that available to the georeferencer so that they can work with it. And so this here, just a quick screenshot of, of the the basic georeferencing client. Um, you can see here it's, it is an example of the record that was shown earlier from Luger Landing and, and a map. And you know you can what what initially happens and when, when data get uploaded into the Koji system, they first get automatically georeferenced, and a number of candidate points get get assigned. And so now you're going through these records one at a time or a batch of them at a time going through assigning points, adding polygons, doing the uncertainty radius and that kind of stuff. You can add comments or, or whatever as you go through. And then you just kind of go through all the data that have been assigned to you until you, you complete the entire thing. And so at the bottom is kind of this workbench view where, where the data pop up. And then at the top half of the map, is, the top half of the screen is a map where you do all the, the editing. Um, and here's an example showing that, you know, it's possible that you will get a record that even though you see the the point on on uh, you see a map on on the screen. You end up finding really accurate coordinates um, from some other third party source. Maybe you Googled it, you looked it up on Wikipedia or something, but you you've identified these coordinates and you want to bring them into the system. So we have a way where you can manually edit and type in coordinates and then apply it to the record at hand. Um, you all, we also track a history of everything you've georeferenced within that particular community. So you can go back and look through your history and use that to apply previous stuff that you've done to work that you're currently georeferencing. So if a record pops up and you're like, oh, I've done this one before, or I've done something similar to this one before, I want to be able to apply that to a record I'm currently working on, then you could go ahead and grab those results from a previous record. You could also go back and continue editing a previous record. So it's not uncommon for someone to be georeferencing, but as they learn the geography of the area and much more familiar with the the areas that they're georeferencing in, they start to learn a lot more and they can refine past georeferences. And so they'll go back into their history, identify records that they want to, to, to change and then go through and do those edits. Um, and then, you know, so here's an example of, of taking a record off the history and, and being able to use it, even though there's a record on the workbench that's shown up at the top, you know, there's another record that from the history that was found to be what you're actually after. And you could sit and, and you could take that record and either move it to the workbench or assign it to the record that you're you're currently working on. About three minutes. Okay, thanks. Um, and so, uh, well, this is just another view of the history. Um, whoops, I'm going in the wrong direction. That's what it was. And so then we also have this more advanced view, which is a little bigger than the history, and it allows you to do really serious bulk editing and review of all the, the records within a particular community. And so here's an example where I took that one user before 
um, Louisa, who was working on records in Florida for AM and H, and I said, give me all the records that this person is currently working on. And I can sit here and review them. I can click and, and get all the details for that particular record that were uploaded. And I can see, um, and, and if I wanted to, I could then take these records, push them to the workbench, do further edits and, and so on. Uh, oops, I keep going in the wrong direction. Um, oh, up at the top, just so I can point out, um, you can see that we have this feature where you can add different kinds of points, lines, polygons, you could add tags to different features. So it's a lot more, there's a lot of capacity for creating things beyond just points and, and radii, which we've traditionally used for georeferencing. Oops. Um, here's just an example of, of some of the results that have come out of using the, the Koji system. So, you know, with 12 technicians and a year and a half, the Fishnet 2 project, we're able to georeference 280,000 localities. Um, you know, and here are some results, you know, where, where every record or 85% of the records were georeferenced with polygons surrounding the particular water bodies, and they all have um, uncertainty radius. Um, another project that was recently done, completed was one uh, related to georeferencing data from horseshoe bats. You know, we had three expert georeferencers within a three-month period. All the data were georeferenced. This project, we actually integrated with the Google Maps platform to use their geocoding service as one of the gazetteer providers. And this allowed us to do, it helped enhance a lot of the georeferencing in a lot of um, remote areas of the world. We found that uh, Google Maps platform had a lot of place names that weren't available in a lot of the public open uh, data sets. Um, another thing, and, and this is, you know, I'm sure John will talk about this at, at depth in, in his talk, is that we now have the ability to link into other georeferencing engines. So the date, when I mentioned that data get automatically georeferenced, they don't all have to be done by geolocate. If you want, you can push your data to, to the Bell service, or you could say, I just want to use Bells and I don't want to use geolocate, or you can use geolocate and then Bells. There's a, there's a way you can chain them, or you could say, give me one, then do the other. So there's lots of different options for how you create your georeferencing pipeline. And we're hoping in the future, if there's other georeferencing engines or other algorithms developed for georeferencing, that maybe some kind of standard as to how these things talk and communicate can, can arise and we can integrate different services. We're at time. All right, since I'm out of time, I'll just quickly, I'll just go through these very quickly and go to the end. Thanks, Nelson. I saw very briefly something on Marine Gazetteers. I would love to know more about that. That's been one of our requests.